now to Italy. Like Greece, it's under pressure from international creditors to bring down its massive national debt. But its economy is so big that an Italian default could bring about the collapse of the entire euro system. Margaret Warner wraps up two weeks of reporting on the European debt story with this report from northern Italy on a country confronting the threats to its economy and much more. Long before models float down the runways in Milan, fashion designers flock here, the biannual Milan Textile Fair. But this year's display of fabric bolts and buyers belies the fact that this cornerstone of Italian industry is struggling. The garment makers are looking for this new um, without lining. Third generation uh, thread maker uh, Roberto Belloli says Italian materials, design, and craftsmanship are in a dogfight competing globally against cheaper goods. And using the euro means Italy can't devalue to compete on price as it did in the days of the lira. And now there's another threat, the Eurozone crisis. Bololi has to turn away longtime customers at home and abroad because they're short of cash or credit. We had uh, a good, uh, a good c company, some customers in Greece, and in, in this moment it's not possible to work with them, for example, or in Spain or in Portugal, because they, in this moment they have no credit. So we, we had to reduce uh, this company. So we, 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 we cannot work with them. All of Italy is hurting. From the fashion and financial hub of Milan to the country's many small towns, business is bad. Earnings have changed. What's in the drawer at the end of the day? It is very easy to work a lot and earn very little. We came from Germany to the prosperous North Italian region of Lombardy to see why Italy's economy is losing ground. The stakes here are enormous. Europe's second most indebted country after Greece, Italy's too big to bail out. But as the world's seventh largest economy, it's too big to fail. The increase in the Italian public debt occurred mostly in the 80s, beginning of the 90s. Economist Tito Boeri, a professor at Bocconi University, says Italy incurred the debt through government giveaways two decades ago. But its biggest problem in tackling the debt now is the last 10 plus years of stagnant growth. Income per capita, so the average income of Italian is now, in 2012, at the level of 1999. The reason uh, behind this is structural, what we call structural problems, structural impediments to growth. That was clear during a visit to Italy's Lake District. Known for its alpine views, it's also home to an age-old manufacturing sector. We are very family-oriented uh, people and uh, we are very attached to, to the ground where we are born. Aristi De Stucchi owns a lighting component firm founded by his grandfather. He feels hamstrung by a labor law that makes it extremely hard for most companies to fire a worker. If uh, the judge uh, do not think uh, that uh, the reason to fire him was good, uh, you must uh, re-put him in place and pay him uh, a salary of uh, up to 60 months. Do you go to court. How long does that whole process take? A life. A life, yes. But does that inhibit you in any way from hiring? Yeah, that, that's the biggest problem now, probably, that uh, Companies uh, think twice uh, to hire somebody. Just up the road is a family-run chain-making company. Its owner, Giovanni Maggi, feels held back by a swollen and unresponsive Italian bureaucracy. The bureaucracy, that is a very negative effect to the economy in Italy, gave us a lot of problems, so we need a lot of permission. Permitting hassles long delayed his plans to build this simple warehouse across the parking lot. We lost two years. And this one, you know, nowadays is not possible because uh, we are in a global market with competition from all the world, and we must be very fast in reaction. And then there is Italy's high rate of corporate taxation. Combined taxes can run more than 50 percent. Stuckey and Maggi argue that's one reason Italian companies aren't as efficient as some foreign competitors. It also leads to tax evasion. The reasons for the Italian sport of tax dodging has even deeper roots, Maggi says. I think maybe it was, uh, you know, in the mentality of the Italians. 
I think that the most of the Italians, they don't believe the state. And the, the most of the Italian, I would say, they have like in their DNA, the fact do not pay taxes. But this, this one doesn't work, I think. So we must pay taxes if we want that our country will be able to survive. Economist Boeri says the underground economy is so pervasive, an estimated 30 percent of total output, that it spawned its own vocabulary. This could be the black economy and the cappuccino economy. The cappuccino is... Uh, What's is, the cappuccino economy? The cappuccino is where there's some milk, no? Is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, the color is less, is less black. So a restaurant might declare some of its receipts, but not Exactly. All. This would be a cappuccino type of situation. Italy's stalled economy has been devastating for many ordinary Italians. Most young people aren't hired full-time these days, but under short-term contracts, giving employers little incentive to train them. 33-year-old architect Francesco Leoncavallo juggles two jobs, just one in his field. Oh, no contract at all? No. In the evenings, I do a job which has no reference to what I studied. And there are lots of newly poor. The Caritas Catholic Charity in Vimercate near Milan used to care mostly for immigrants. Now an increasing number seeking help are proud Italians, like pensioner Piero Raffaglio, who says her son and son-in-law both lost their jobs. My situation today is a disaster. There is more than one reason for it. Number one, the euro currency which entered Europe. It has made everything cost more. Is it hard for you to come here? Pinuccia Pierola, who's run the center since it opened in 2000, says native-born Italians used to be just 3 percent of its cases. Now they're 35 percent. The problems affecting the families are unemployment, income and housing, but also family problems, conflicts, separations, single mothers. He or she who is poor always has other problems too. Yet it was only last summer, as the global bond market started hammering Italy's interest rates, that Italians were forced to confront the trouble they were in. Under pressure from the markets and European Union leaders like Germany's Angela Merkel and France's Nicolas Sarkozy, Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi resigned and was replaced by unelected economist Mario Monti. We decided that in an emergency we would need to rush to Dr. Monti emergency room and uh, we could not fool around all night with good old Silvio and his mm, people and his uh, colorful entourage, and please note my understatement. Italian journalist and author so Beppe Severnini says many Italians deep down welcomed intervention by their northern neighbors. The reality was, was where we were going down the drain, down the, the we were going the Greece way, and that would be a disaster for us and for the rest of Europe, and I think for the rest of the world. In three months, Monti has pushed through spending cuts, a hike in the retirement age, and renewed taxes on primary residences. But there's resistance to his attempts to liberalize the economy from the grip of guilds that limit numbers and set minimum prices for pharmacists, lawyers, notaries, and taxis. Uh, Cab driver Antonio Costa says he will have to work more for less money if more cabs hit the streets, while tax hikes have raised gas prices. He faults EU leaders for pressuring Monti without giving him much of a helping hand. I believe Merkel could have done more for us economically. For example, euro bonds, which she refused to do and she should have. But Germany is the most powerful force. They hold the knife by the handle so they can decide whether we have good weather or bad weather. Are the Germans trying to dictate to Europe? Certainly. No doubt about it. Polls show a majority of Italians, like consumer goods company manager Andrea Rendina, approve of what Monti's doing. Do you think he's going to succeed? Provided he has the opportunity to continue working, yes, he will. I certainly he can do it because eventually we have expert people at the right place. The Italians have changed more uh, in the last six months than they have in the last 
15, 20 years. Uh, but Italy is an operat operatic country, never forget that. And, he, and the, in he, the, the crowd in the theater, uh, they cheer the tenor until the very moment, until they boo him off the stage. Yet with so much at stake, says Beppe Severnini, perhaps bravos won't give way to boos too quickly this time. Deep down, we know that's the only way to do things. Work longer, do not waste money, pay your taxes. If we do that, then Italy is paradise. So everything else is right. Look at a place like this. Look at a town like this. Look at the food, the wine, the families we have. We got everything all right. All right, indeed. But if Italians want to preserve the way of life they cherish, they are first going to have to save it.